Today, I used Van Gogh's colors, and I made some interesting discoveries about the way I think he was seeing things. So let's get started. This is the photograph that I'm going to be using, and I'll probably use it for several artists, but today I'm going to do uh, or try to use Van Gogh. So what I did was I picked a painting of his, printed it out, and then matched the colors from his painting to my little squares here, and I put the little recipes next to the squares so you can see what they are. Uh, there was a lot of color in these mixes. The other thing that I noticed was, um, what did I notice? Uh, it'll come to me later. I can't remember. But let's get to the painting part. Okay, here's the painting. Sorry about that. It went a little, a little screwy there. So there's my printed out uh, picture, which is slightly different from the monitor on my computer. Everything was much more yellow. What a surprise, right? Yellow is, uh, oh boy, yellow, yellow, yellow. I felt after a while of painting this painting that Van Gogh, what I see is white, I or maybe sometimes a neutral, a light neutral, I think Van Gogh saw as yellow because I can't find any place in his painting where he didn't insert yellow as a white. One spot. Now, yeah, I have to admit there's one spot, but it definitely tilts toward green. Now, one of the things that fascinates me about Van Gogh is what a colorist he is because we all know that his bedroom <laughs> did not look like this. You know, it was probably drab and just neutral browns and grays would be my guess. But the way he saw the world was full of color and he would use color value swap outs. So instead, of, so the value was probably the same. In other words, how dark or light something was in his bedroom was probably the same as the way he portrays it here in this picture. But I don't think the colors were these colors. And that's what makes him such a great colorist is that he can match value so perfectly. There's that really famous portrait of Van Gogh where his face is just a variety of green dabs. But when you pull away from it, you see it all as flesh colored. He just is a color value swap out champ. And that's what is really appealing to me. Now I could have picked a different picture. There were several that I chose from. I wanted to pick one that was um, kind of what I think of as Van Gogh colors. I could have gone to Starry Starry Night, but as you can see from my photograph, um, maybe that would have worked. I don't know. I may try it again and, and use that painting, but this one in particular spoke to me. And it might have something to do with that cadmium red throw or blanket that's on his bed. I'm not sure. Now, normally what I would do is I would have a lot of neutrals going on by now. I would have mixed up some grays. I would have put as much color in my grays as I possibly could, but I definitely would have gone toward gray. Almost always where I would go toward gray, he goes to blue and a cobalt blue. Uh, sometimes an ultramarine blue, sometimes a Prussian that's mixed, I think, with a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm not sure. It tilts really, really dark. He doesn't use a lot of darks. Well, in this painting in particular, he didn't. But I did find whenever there was a gap, you know, that kind of gap when you're painting and you think to yourself, oh, what's that color? What's that color? And then you're not matching, but you have to find a value for it. And it might be an unnamed color. And, and then I would think of it as a neutral. But it seemed like nine times out of 10 when I asked myself that question and, and was in his head, the answer came out yellow or a variation on yellow, or maybe a greenish yellow. It was really weird. <laughs> I can't even explain it because I try to not use a lot of yellow because I feel like yellow takes over. Uh, but he obviously did not feel that way. The other thing that I noticed is that uh, he's quite, he's so definitive. You know, there's there's never, there's nothing, nothing wishy-washy. There's a color decision made and he implements it. And so I went in and tried to put as much paint on my brush as I possibly could. And sometimes near the end, use pigment directly from the well. So I think I got as close to inside his head as it might be possible for me to get. Uh, I'm not sure about that. 
I, I, I really admire his, his color choices and the way he inserts different color choices for values, but I also am not, I'm not his biggest fan. And I don't think it would be hurt to know that because he has plenty, plenty of fans. I certainly like painters who are maybe a little bit more um, subtle. Uh, you know, a painter's painter like a Morandi, for example. But that's not what today was about. Today was about channeling, uh, well, it was about being strategic, choosing a painting by another painter, in this case Van Gogh, matching the colors to his painting, and go, going ahead then and using my photograph and insult, inserting his value color choices for what appears on the photograph. And I think I got as close as it's possible for me to go. This is definitely not a painting that I would have painted without doing this exercise. And that's the point of this whole thing, is to get me out of my rut of using the same colors that I always use or producing the same painting that I always use. So I, I have to admit, I'm enjoying this series. I think this is the third or fourth one that I've done. I, I, uh, I plan to do more because I'm making discoveries all the time. And I think what I learned most about Van Gogh was he saw yellow in everything, and I think he also saw blue almost everywhere as well. And that was really interesting to me. And here's a picture of everything I had in front of me. I have the colors that I mixed up. I have the photograph I'm working from, the painting that I did, and then his painting above that that I can refer to. But I wanted you to see all the references in, in one place so you could get a better idea of what it was, what the exercise was. And now I'm just putting in some final touches because in his painting he has some almost dark outlines in some places, which is something I would never ever do. But because of this exercise, it was required to do it. So that is my observations about what painting like Van Gogh might be like. There you can see them all together. I'm pretty proud of how it worked out. It's not nearly as it's, it sounds like it's an arduous process, but it's not. It's actually really fun because all the strategizing happens ahead of time because you mixed up all the paint, and then it just comes down to executing it. So that is my interpretation of Van Gogh. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.